Hi, hey everybody, and welcome back to the most amazing, bestest, and funnest. incredible, funnest show on the internet, the Oversharing Show. Welcome back for another episode. I'm excited about today. We are going to be uh, kind of just free flowing, and Sharon had a nice trip, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the eclipse. And probably fear and some other fun stuff like that. So stick around. But before we get into that, I'm going to read today's quote. Today's quote. <clears throat> today's quote is by Henry David Thoreau. It's the beauty within us that makes it possible for us to recognize the beauty around us. The question is not what you look at, but what you see. Henry David Thoreau. I love that because yeah. it really is. It is your viewpoint and how you see this world and this realm. And just like even Bashar says, sometimes I have uh, recently seen something about what he said about like, you, you think you're in this, um, you think you're in this place where people around you, like if, if you see differently than other people, and I mean, see with your, <laughs> spiritual eye mm -hmm. um and you see people around you physically who are not vibing on your same wavelength whatnot and you can think to yourself am i still in that am i still part of that like why are they still around <laughs> um and he says basically just because you see them doesn't mean i think i said this in another episode but like just because you see them doesn't mean that they're vibing in your same realm. Um, but I mean, who knows? They could see you and maybe wonder how they could approximate you and where you're at. If they, if they like your vibe and they're like, wait, that's nice. You know, maybe yeah. I can do that. But uh, yeah, just because we see them doesn't mean we're on the we're vibing on the same. He talks about like glass walls. I can't replicate what he says, but like it's kind of like there's this wall, and you're they're not in the same room with you. <laughs> there you can see them, but they're not in the same room. Something like that. Yeah, it's like it's like a reality <clears throat> tunnel. You could look at it that way too. If there's tunnels, so maybe your tunnel, our tunnels right now are clear and we could still see people that are kind of experience a different reality and i think it all just starts from your point of view and your vibration even just take 2020 like you know there's a lot of people who think we went through this crazy disease that just happened out of nowhere because there's too many people or who eat meat or whatever the heck their reasons are you know and they just think it's some crazy cosmic coincidence you know whoa so I, you could argue that they're living in a different reality, even though you could see them, they're in a different world because yes. if you can get behind their view and see the world, it would be a totally different place. It'd be scary. You know, uh, who knows? It's frequency and vibration. It's that's how they are seeing their world. <clears throat> and we don't see it the same way. And that's why I wanted to talk about this a little bit because, um, that whole like fear mongering that was kind of happening or before it was like months, weeks before everybody's like, Oh my God, people are going to be, there will be millions of people down the path of the eclipse. And there could be, you know, all kinds of X, Y, Z, who knows that happens. And you're like, okay, there's, I mean, you, you've had crazy events. Like I went to the uh the phoenix open the golf tournament there were like hundreds of thousands of people there it was insanity and yet like nobody died nothing you know what i mean like you guys know how to crowd control like people will know what to do and you don't need to fear people you didn't fear them for going there to the freaking open and that was like ridiculous that was so many people and then, oh, like, oh, millions of people will be crowding this, you know, the towns or the cities where there's going to be, you know, totality. It's like, well, they can figure things out. 
Everything will be right. okay. Are you muted? Am I? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just so, laughing. You know, I thought of all of that that was kind of going on and like, you know, maybe like don't go or don't go outside and don't look at it or, you know, like there were so many like, and then some people were like, like, oh, go. glasses and like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, only look at it with special glasses, which is fine. Like when I went out there to see it and I, you know, I did end up using some glasses, but it was because oh, like in totality, I would probably have looked at it completely open. I mean, with no glasses, but as it's going through, like I'm not as well versed with like sun gazing to see a midday sun without like blinding myself <laughs> yeah yeah no that, I, I can do sense. it at sundown and sun sun up and sunset i can do i can sun gaze at sun up and sunset but at the midday like that's too much for my eyes i haven't accustomed my eyes to it yet so i wasn't going to do that but um we'll talk about that in a second anyway that was mm -hmm. the quote and i'm going to pull a card from the Luna Soul deck, because that's appropriate, right? Uh, and um, I wanted to just finish the thought real quick. What you said about oh, yes. shuffle, because while you shuffle, but um, yeah. So if if we start that way and we could still see people and interact with them, but we're in these different realities, maybe going forward in the future, there is some kind of event or something does happen where we do separate. You know, I think that's what he was talking about, but it could be pointed to right here i mean just right next to the person but you're just on a different wavelength than them you know it's like if we were at a pro basketball game and you know i don't know who plays basketball anymore but i was on the court with all these other guys i'd be in a different world than them you know yeah i could play basketball and i could still stand there next to him but it would be uh it would be crazy Especially yeah if I how to play with them you know they're just on a different level same yeah. thing and could it be you'd be on a different plane or level or whatever than the people in the audience too. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Six of cups. Emotions. Oops. Right. Oh, yeah, I like it. Six different cups. I forgot what the six of cups looks like in the Rider weight. I know, isn't the seven of cups the one where there's options and you choose from the options? Yep, yep. What was and the I, six? Do you remember the six? Uh, Is it? Well, it, it's kind of, it's making me think of that because of their handing it. But is it the one where there's like a kid handing a cup to... Here, I'll look it up. Another kid. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Cool. Here, I'll pull it up. Here, there's one with a little, with a little meaning on it. That's cool. And I can read from the soul book too once you pull it up. All right. Next. I need a mouse for this computer. A mouse, mouse. And just use the... Uh... You use the trackpad? Yeah, it's still downloading. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, maybe I can't. You know what? I'll just pull it up like this. Oh. Oh, I see what happened. Just some quickly te technical difficulties. No problem, everybody. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly read from... Yeah, go Here, ahead. By the time we're done. It says six of cups. The happy times of your past have come back to remind you of a sweet innocence that you once knew. Embrace these thoughts and use your current position to get back to this state of growth and positivity. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could uh, say, oh, there you go. Reunions with loved ones, second honeymoons, and second chances. Lost love returns, old friendships renewed. 
Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, it's nice. um, that pertains to my trip, I would say. I would you know? say it definitely does. Because we um went to visit Cody's dad, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's crazy. It's like family you reunion, in a right? While, right? Yeah, I mean, he saw him last year in Jersey. But, yeah, I mean, it's not like he lives in Texas, so it's not like they see each other all the time. So, so yeah, there you go. That pertains. And we got to meet with the uh, person in our chat named Benito. Oh, yeah, we got cool. to spend a little bit of time with him because um, he, he uh, invited us onto um, the property where his dad lives. And that's where we watched the eclipse. Oh. Yes. So. And nobody got sucked up? <laughs> yeah, nobody got sucked up. So uh, where do we start? Do you want to start with, uh, where do you want to talk about? Uh, well, start? I, you know, we could definitely talk about your trip a little bit if you want to talk about some things or maybe some things that you saw along the way or something like that. Um, but I think that we should probably start off by talking about the eclipse. Now it's 10 days later and people are just like on to other things, right? They just, this is my favorite time. So now we're living it in real time, 10 days after the eclipse. And I'm just walking around like, oh, everyone's fine. What about, you know, all the craziness that was supposed to happen? And uh <laughs> Everyone's fine, though. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to move on to the next thing, you know, like how they canceled schools and all this stuff. And they're worried about things. Um, but I think it just goes to people taking signs in the sky or whatever they are, just taking everything and worshiping it. And like, it's it's all idolatry. We were talking about this yesterday with go. If you guys want to if you need some more content, go check out the Brandon Bonanza episode I did yesterday. Uh, it's with Jeff and Joe. It's called Propaganda 2. And um, we were talking about idolatry. And I was talking about how I think that that's where everything went wrong. Like they got people into materialism with idolatry. Because before, if you take this message of Christ, for example, right? That's in the, the, the Bible and the New Testament. The gospel, the word of Jesus, the red letters. All right, I'm done. Um <laughs> The gospel, which is the good news. The good news. Yeah, there you go. That's the one I forgot. I knew there was more. Um, so you take this good news. And if you look at it as a way to live and a way to pattern yourself and, you know, you, you look at these parables and you get some deeper meaning from them. And if you could see that there's a way of life, even call it like a religion or something that's based around that. You could see how that's a good thing. It's more spiritually minded because you're focus more on others uh, than you are over yourself and that, then you take this exact same concept and you put a person in the middle of it and you say that he died for people's sins and then you have them worship that person and say that he's the only way now to heaven and now you have the scarcity that's introduced right it's mm -hmm. all and scarcity can only come in with a materialistic mindset if you are only focused on the material. Oh, yeah. And that's what we mean when we say materialistic, just to kind of clarify for people, if there's new listeners, a materialistic mindset uh, is just one that you think that matter is like uh, the primacy of matter. You think matter is the most important thing. Matter really matters. And uh, mm. there's no other thing, or if there is, it's secondary to matter. And then um I forgot what it's called exactly the other line of thinking where it's not materialism, but you know, you can say materialism. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can say spirituality. Uh, Jeff said it yesterday and I remember, cause I think I heard Michael Tessarion talk about it, but anywho, mm -hmm. um, that's where I think all these things go wrong. And now to bring it back to the eclipse, it's kind of the same thing because people were, they were uh, worshiping it or they thought it was like an enemy. So they were, they were what was the word i used earlier that you're not supposed to do idolize Worship. idolize worshiping it but yeah they were idolizing this eclipse well may i just point out something yeah go it ahead it was 
it was a scarcity because eclipses don't happen that often, but yet yeah. they kind of do not necessarily in the same places every year, but they're not like super anomalies. They do happen. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. They happen throughout the realm. And I think it's cool that it's all calculated, you know, to me, it's just more evidence that we live in a magical place and this, that, that actually plays in. So I'm glad you said that because so, Right there, everyone's idol. Well, not everybody, but people are idolizing this eclipse. It's either going to be the best thing ever. It's going to destroy the happen. world. It's going to destroy the world. It's going to signal the rapture. You know, all these things are going to happen, like earthquakes, whatever. But people are fearing this actual event, and it just it reminds me of something that we were talking about before we started to go live, which was how people view the sky and space, for example. And I've talked about this a little bit on the show, but I really think that the story we get from NASA and the mainstream materialistic view, there we go again, there's that word, right, of round bodies, planets, masses in this in space in some kind of vacuum. <laughs> that I think this story is kind of like a fairy tale to tell people. So I was talking about this. It could yesterday. be allegory, could it be? Yeah, allegory also, but... Because people, like you see the profane masses, people that aren't exactly awake. And let me tell you, some people that are even awake don't really get it either. But whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, I, no judgments here. But uh, people, you could say, that aren't awake yet, that are just going about their life, living a materialistic life, right? They're steeped in materialism. This is their fairy tale. This is what helps them sleep at night. This is what helps them get through the day. Because if we said to them, Hey, I don't know what that is up there. Like, I think it might be a reflection of our consciousness or I, I don't know, but a reflection of the realm, a reflection the, of the realm, the territories on the realm, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever it could be that would people would not be able to go to work, you know? So, I mean, if you like the world that we live in, in the order that we do have where we're not actually crazy we have some form of civilization then you can't really hate the fact that nasa is out there doing this because people need, need it. it they would go crazy without it and you know i think all this you could probably have a society of people that you didn't have to indoctrinate into this stuff but if you did you couldn't have the society that we have today so it's kind of like a a catch 22 and you know i love the woods and i i'm not like a huge fan of the society but it's better than the unknown because who knows what could be after and i'm not saying we shouldn't try to make ourselves better to change the world but i think an abrupt change would just be like insanity for people it's a you lot know? yeah if they just came out tomorrow it was like yeah nasa just was like haha we were joking this whole time you know we don't know what that is everybody people literally like it would be like one of those movies where people just like go crazy. Go insane. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they could psyop them in a way and release some things and have it happen uh, better. But if it just came out tomorrow. So it's going along. And the with thing this is, even here's the thing. Yeah. I, it couldn't come out because people just sometimes they won't even believe it because yeah, they're so right. steeped. They're yeah, so they, steeped yeah. in what they believe. That they would, it would just gloss over. It, it's like cognitive dissonance. They just gloss over it, like, oh, whatever. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're 100 percent right. I it's like, cool. like we talk about all the time, like trying to make someone aware. Where did I see this? I was reading or listening to something, and this guy was like, "Oh, <laughs> I was looking at this." Uh, book by terrence howard the actor yes yeah he, he wrote something that is and i don't i'm not claiming that it it is or it isn't i'm just looking at it because i'm just like oh this is interesting what could this be about but anyway i won't go into detail but anyway he was saying you know those that terminology of like oh you're woke or you're awake or you're you know whatever he used all these words and then he's like i like the word aware it's like, I like to use the word aware. I'm just aware. So anyway, that's why I was using that word. <laughs> but anyway, where was I? No, that that is oh. really fascinating. If we get a better handle on it, we got to maybe talk about it sometime. But the whole one times one thing shouldn't Equal, be yeah. one. 
yeah it just makes so much sense you're like yeah if it's multiplication then <laughs> yeah well because it's being called multiplication right yeah that's the thing um you can also see it so we're getting off topic but it's fine you can also see it in from the perspective of when you do one times one so like one one time one one time is one and that's what the times table is about right I don't know if he says that any anything about that yet. What I think he's talking about is when you say multiplication. Yeah, yeah. Because if you multiply something, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I'm, I just started reading the intro to the book. It's like a little PDF book that he previewed on a website. I just looked it up. I'm barely like reading the beginning of it i'm not even close to well, let me know if you come across any gems we should discuss yeah we'll do we'll do for sure but um anyway the whole aware thing i liked i liked that and um we just jokingly use the word woke anyway because we don't even use it the way modern whatever uses you know what i mean like modern people use it but um this whole this whole concept of um being aware um you can't like someone in deep sleep we've talked about this before someone in deep sleep you can't just like abruptly wake them up it fr it'll freak them out like you don't want to do that to somebody do you like you wouldn't want it done to you right yeah it's a better we, way to phrase it. a lot of people do it to themselves with this with the uh, alarms and the snoozing of the alarms but <laughs> which I stopped doing years ago, but you know, Cody still uses alarms. So I sometimes get to hear them again, which is um not so fun for me, but whatever it is, what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, you can't just abruptly wake someone up and like force them to be aware of something that they're not willing to see yet. So yeah, it's a it's a shock. If you did, it would be a shock, and it doesn't really go along with the whole like flow of you know smooth flow of things. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So that and then that's exactly why I think there's this story of planets in a universe in this whole. Obviously, there's other reasons it makes people feel insignificant and stuff like that, but. I feel like um, because it's so firmly in place, there's really nothing you can do about it. But we get all these just only for yourself, right? And like we're doing, but then you get all these side effects. And one of them is the hysteria over uh, an eclipse. But I, I do feel like these things are signs. And um, I feel like it, other people who are playing these games in the mainstream and stuff like that, you know, I feel like they probably use them also for their uh, distractions, shall we say, you know, that you see in the news, like wars or I don't know, bridge collapses or whatever the heck is going on. Who's waking up? That's funny. It's what Cody just said. What's up, Cody? What's yeah. up? Blue Kachina I'm back. What's up, Blue? How's it going? On dissident, good to see you. Quiet Sparky Bear earlier. Yeah, so that's that's what I think we're dealing with. And you know, going forward, it's great. We could just kind of use this lens to look at whatever the heck people are saying is gonna come. Now, I'm not saying things aren't gonna happen. I'm sure they will. We we are in an election year, everybody. You know, I mean, it seems to me that more of the psyops happen during election years than any other time or like shortly after. So I'm sure we're going to have, you know, see some crazy things happening in the mainstream, but it really just comes down to what we talk about a lot of times with fear and acting despite the fear and not basing your decisions upon that stuff. Like Sharon, didn't she went out to go see the eclipse with her own eyes right in the center of the totality? She had the opportunity. It arose and she took it. If she was living from fear. She would have been like, oh, I don't know. And she could have stayed home and she could have got, you know, attacked by a, a bunch of peccaries, wild <laughs> peccaries in her 
and she could have stubbed a toe. It would have been terrible. You never know. Um, yeah, but yeah. So, uh, speaking of the, the trip, I'll just, uh, briefly try to give a brief overview of my trip and, um, maybe you can too tell us about what you saw, if you saw anything. So yeah, you were talking about how there was a lot of like fear going on about like, you know, going to see it. People thought it was going to be chaotic. There was going to be insane amounts of traffic and you just wouldn't be able to do anything. It was just, and I was just trying to calm myself too, because I was like, don't let that get to you. Like it's going to be okay. So I was imagining myself in this, I was like imagining a reality tunnel of like peace and everything just working out, get, you know, being on the road out there with like no problems, like no traffic and stuff like that. And yes, we did encounter some traffic in the city in San Antonio, Um, but that was because there's a lot of construction too. So there's just other other uh and there were lots of people in town for the eclipse so um yeah you can imagine there is going to be some traffic but like on the way in we drove a couple of days a few days before and um got there to san antonio and then we spent a few days there at cody's dad's house got to meet his dad and um his dad's wife and then um their daughter so I got to meet them and, and then we watched the eclipse falling day and then we came back. But like, just as I imagined, like the trip out there and it took us a couple of days to get there. So the first day was like 12 hours of being on the road, which was long and Arizona does not observe daylight saving. So we were two hours behind San Antonio. So like adding two hours to that day made it feel even longer. That's crazy. <laughs> so, but we stopped in um, a small town and spent the night there. And then from that, from there, we, the next day we drove out towards San Antonio um, and we stopped at a couple of places. We had already kind of looked at where we might want to see the eclipse and so there was a place in Kerrville, Texas, which was the location where NASA was hosting an event. And uh-huh. we, you know, we wanted to see what that was going to look kind of look like and like where we would park if we went and stuff like that. So we we got off the highway in Kerrville and um, looked around and went to to the park. And it was, it was really pretty park. We took pictures and it was nice because we took our time, um, getting into San Antonio. So, and we had, we had made most of the trip out and we only had like four, maybe four hours left of the trip. So we took our time. And then after that park in Kerrville, we drove out a little bit further and went to this, um, park, another park that's like close to comfort, Texas. If it isn't all, if it isn't in comfort and in that park was another location. We didn't necessarily know that anything was going to be happening there, but we had seen it as a nice little place where we can maybe watch, watch it. Right. And this is still like a good 45 minutes out from San Antonio on the way to San Antonio. So we stopped there. And looked around and there were lots of porta potties there. So we're like, oh, they're planning on lots of people probably showing up here for the event as well. But we got to see some uh, longhorn cattle. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, um, And then we went back on the road on our way to San Antonio. So and like I had imagined on the way there like no real traffic. It was, it was fine. It was good. Yeah. We were, there were like the town where we stayed, the hotels were, I guess they were pretty full, but we didn't encounter like, like traffic or anything, you know, like lots of people like, ah, 
yeah, I mean, there were people there who were there to watch the eclipse probably. Um, so yeah, we got into San Antonio, hung out a couple days there before the eclipse and, uh, went to down to the river walk and we saw the Alamo. <laughs> there was a lot of construction going on, um, near the Alamo and there was lots of construction on the highways in San Antonio, but I guess, um, that that's always the case, I guess going on yeah, like around here did uh did cody make any alamo basement jokes no okay because of peewee's big adventure oh to do tell uh in the movie peewee's big adventure peewee hermit gets his bike stolen and a guy told him that he left it in the basement of the alamo and he hitchhiked oh there and God. spoiler alert there is no basement in the alamo <laughs> yeah so yeah we did walk the grounds a little bit near the alamo it was really pretty and um yeah the like the downtown area there in san antonio's nice we hung out at this restaurant at one on one of the days and they had really good food we met some people at the bar we just ended up hanging out with them that's cool um yeah so but yeah um no real craziness now on the day of the time frame to go to see the eclipse um, you know, we didn't, we took our time. We weren't like trying to be too early or too late or whatever. We we're just like, you know what, we'll wake up when we want and just kind of just get ready and then go. So it was probably around, I want to say 10 ish, maybe that we left the house and, um, Cody's dad was working from home and, um, his sister was going to school. She's going to nursing school. So, um, they won't, they didn't come with us. So Cody and I left and we were planning on heading toward the Joshua Springs park. Cause that's where we thought we'd see it. I'd been in contact with Ben and he and I were, had talked about like, maybe we would meet up and see and watch it or something, but he hadn't texted me that morning. So I was just like, let's just go to, um, let's just go toward uh, Joshua Springs Park. And so on our way, he he calls and he's like, you know, we're, how are you guys doing? Where are you guys at? And it was crazy because we we're in traffic on because like everybody's trying to leave San Antonio to go like a little bit northeast where the totality is going to be a little bit longer. So we're on this highway and it's just like traffic is there's a ton of traffic. <laughs> And I was like, almost like, let's just get off. Like, let's just watch it from a parking lot somewhere because this is insane. Um, and around that time, as we're getting off, um, Ben was like, actually, I'm like really right, really close by right here. Why don't we just meet here and I'll guide you and we'll just go up to my dad's property and we'll just watch it there. And I was like, okay. So, so that's what we did. We got off the highway and then we were kind of doing some side streets and, um, and that was not as bad. The traffic was not as bad on the side streets. So we did that. And, um, yeah, we ended up sitting on, uh, on a concrete slab that was going to become their garage at some point because they're remodeling a little bit. They're adding onto their house. So we got some lawn chairs and we all sat outside. They had these eclipse glasses. They're all ready to go. Nice. <laughs> and they're, you know, we just sat there and kind of waited for it to, to begin. And um, the thing was days prior, all the way to the day of the eclipse, it was like cloudy all the time. It was just perpetually cloudy. And there were times on some days where the clouds would like clear and you'd get some sun coming out. And like the day we did the river walk on the weekend, it was like that. And I was hoping that that would happen on Monday, but it didn't. And like we were out there and the clouds were just cloudy, 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 like very little space where you could see any sky. And I was like, I was, I was kind of annoyed because it's like, 
I thought, you know, they would like clear the skies for NASA because NASA was hosting an event to watch it. Like, I'm like, well, certainly they'll clear the skies for them, you know, <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> Maybe they uh, were so. <laughs> hmm? Maybe they work for different people. <laughs> we all think it's one. It's just like different, you know. <laughs> right, right. These these were nobodies. They didn't, you know, <laughs> they didn't get the sky cleared for them. So, um, but yeah. what I ended up hearing is that pretty much the, almost the entire nation was covered in clouds. That can, It's like, hmm, <laughs> thanks on the freaking day that we're supposed to see this amazing eclipse that comes around every however many years like you block the sky thanks you know um anyway there were places that didn't get too much cloud cover or any cloud cover i think up in like maine i heard maybe some parts of vermont um I know you'll tell me in a second when we you tell me your story, but um, yeah. So as I as the clouds were going through and the and the sun is being eclipsed, right? You would see like you could see it sometimes peek through a little bit, but not a lot. So sometimes I would take the glasses and look, and sometimes I could just look at it without without the glasses because it was so cloudy. Um, so during that time you could kind of see it, but when it fully eclipsed, you could, it obviously couldn't see because it was so dark, like it got really dark. And I took a video on my iPhone and even, you know, how iPhone will, I don't know if you know, but iPhone will, the camera will compensate for the lighting. So if it's dark, it's still you know, allows some light in to the lens and it doesn't look as dark. So I'm recording and I'm looking at the camera and I'm looking around me and it's darker around me than the camera shows. I'm like, this is like not really depicting how dark it is out here. Um, but crazy. we, because we're on this property and it's kind of higher up, you can see the distance. And we saw um, fireworks going off in the distance during the totality and it was maybe it was in Kerrville where you know that stuff was going on because it's you know not that far away but yeah during that whole totality which lasted a few minutes for us um it was it got so dark you know and it, you know people say it it feels eerie I mean it just felt odd because it's in the middle of the day right I wasn't like scared or anything it was just like different, you know, like, whoa, this is different. This doesn't, this is not a normal thing. Right. Um, so, but it did get all quiet, right? You didn't hear any more. We, we heard birds all the way up to totality pretty much. <laughs> then you don't hear, then you didn't hear anything. It was quiet. And then I didn't notice this, but Cody did as soon as the totality was passed and we were, you know, the sun was coming out again from the eclipse. Cody heard a crow like two times and like I heard it, but I didn't process that. They do that from, you know, when it's sun up. You know oh, what yeah. I, mean? I mean, they crow sometimes randomly throughout the day, but we hadn't heard anything up until the sun started coming back out of the eclipse. So that was interesting. Oh, that is That is really cool. I like that. Yeah. And then they had a dog. Her name is Pearl. She was cute. Um, she was just this, like this um, white, uh, what would you call like a go kind of a golden retriever type, but the white mm -hmm. one like that. She was kind of like that, like a lab. Yeah, kind of like maybe a lab mix, retriever mix, or something like that. I they may have said what they what she was, but I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't put it to mind. Um, and I guess she can sense, they notice that she can sense storms before they come. And she does like, she, she lie on the ground, like the bef right before the eclipse, like right before the totality, 
she like lie on the floor and like she was like shivering almost like she was so anxious. It was kind of interesting. They're like, that's kind of odd for her because she was she was running around before, like trying to play with us and trying to like be near us and everything. And then at a, at a point, she's like lie on the floor and just like shivered. Um, at least I don't know. She just looked anxious. So. And then the next day it rained. <laughs> Figures. I don't know if she sent that, but um, so that was the that was the totality uh that I experienced. And like I said, during the totality, this the clouds were were like so thick. They were even thicker than during like the partial. So like you couldn't see anything. I wanted to see the ring, you know, and I, there was nothing to see during the totality. We, not where we were, we couldn't see anything. That's really crazy to say that because here um, in, in Connecticut, it wasn't in the path of totality. We were supposed to get like a nice little eclipse, like a nice little crescent sun, like bullhorns that we were supposed to be able to see. And it was pretty clear all morning and all day. And then I think it happened here around 3.30. Oh, okay. And yeah, because it was it was um one thirty in... No, so how did it happen? Okay, yeah, yeah. Never mind. But yeah, it was like one thirty in um, Texas. Yeah, it was like... Or at least in that part of Texas. So, um... Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, but it seemed like these clouds started to move in as the sun was dimming. And I was looking out the back. We have like a slider and I could see the backyard and there's a yard and then there's all these really tall pine trees. And you could see in the distance and it looked like black clouds, like there's a storm coming. It was really crazy. And it did get dim. It got really dim. And my cat was outside for a little bit and she was acting really kind of like lethargic. Mm. and I, I took her in and she was just like sleeping and all the other cats were just like laying down um but it did seem really odd that these clouds just moved in out of nowhere and i don't know if maybe those clouds already exist and maybe they're just vapor and then with less sunlight they become opaque maybe that's the case because that's what it seemed like you know i mean i, I think i did see uh, chemtrail plane or whatever the the spring whatever that is uh, or the day before uh, a little bit maybe that day I can't remember but um it was really odd it was like very sunny and then all of a sudden all these clouds moved in out of nowhere and it's not even like you saw them move in it's just kind of like they appeared like it just started getting dark around it was crazy so I wonder if that's what it is if maybe the sun at full brightness um shines through those clouds you know they just become more opaque mm -hmm. as it gets covered yeah that that could very well be i mean that makes sense too and you know i and that's that's pretty much my experience and i could look up and see like a light that was getting dim through the clouds that was pretty much it every once in a while you can kind okay, of okay so you did had some cloud cover too right yeah and then every once in a while you can kind of look up and see but i didn't really i didn't have the glasses so i was just kind of mm -hmm. peeking up a little bit yeah and, uh, you know, we didn't see anything where we were. Oh, Zerlot said Eclipse also dropped temp about 20 degrees. Uh, you know, maybe I remember a... feeling like people, like, I think even Ben or somebody said, feels like it's gotten colder. Yeah, it definitely it, got chillier outside. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So maybe that contributes also to the moisture in the air. The yeah, cloud. and the weather could be for sure. But I, I got to say, because we were, I was out to dinner with Elizabeth and her father and her father's wife. And uh, the, there was an older waitress there and she, she said she had a son and one of them had long hair. So, and she, at one point she was just like, you have like the best hair. I love your hair. It's so funny. So <laughs> because she was being cool like that, she was talking about the eclipse. Cause this was uh, just this past week, this Sunday. And um, so I was like, I think I said you mean something before about, the eclipse. No, it was right after the eclipse. I'm like, oh, did you see it? I'm oh, like, okay, okay, okay. 
I'm like, didn't it seem like it was like a hole in the sky and then it like got covered like it was a manhole and then it just like a light, you know, isn't that and it just changed like her. She's like, I don't I she's like, I didn't really get to see it too well. So, you know, I don't really know. And then she just like started talking about something else. But I was just trying to bring it that up. Was, to me, it's yeah. like I think you would see if it was really a moon out there coming. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you didn't see, see any object Wouldn't like see, when yeah. I that's what I said when I saw that video. Um, it's that I sent to you that I saw some video somewhere. I can't remember where Instagram or somewhere. And it, it was like the eclipse happening. Right. And it's like, you know, whatever it's doing, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and it literally looked to me like I'm looking up through a manhole and the manhole is being covered. That's what it looked like to me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if this was the sun and this was the moon moving in, don't you think you would see it? Especially if it's backlit by the sun, the sun's bright. Like, if it was behind the sun, I get it. You're not going to see it. But if it's in front of it on a clear day, how do you not see it? And then, even if it's behind it, though, you would, because if the sun is a sphere, then it, it its light radiates everywhere. So even well, if it's behind or in front or whatever, you would see something. I see. I see, see what you're saying. But I could see somebody making an argument that the sun is so bright that it's just shining. It's like a it's like if you had a flashlight in your face, you wouldn't be able to see what was behind the flashlight kind of thing. You know, I could maybe see that argument. But if, okay. the, if the moon, I see what you mean. Yeah. If the moon is like in front, because the moon isn't apparently isn't supposed to be its own light source either. But the, if the moon was in front, I mean, that to me is crazy how people could just look at what we saw in those videos and just be like, like oh yeah that's the that's the moon covering the sun i have nothing to see here it yeah goes back well to, go ahead no you go it just goes back to like this stuff we were talking about yesterday with propaganda and and a way to like control people's minds and thoughts and stuff where joe sent me this video and he was talking about it where this guy he's a uh, hypnotist i think and and uh great britain or in england or united kingdom or whatever you're supposed to say and uh he's not really he's not known here at all so he goes to new york and he's like buying things with paper instead of money he just has blank paper i he's, like, heard him people. say that yeah so if people are conditioned properly it doesn't matter really what's going to happen up there but to me it just falls back into this whole fairy tale because if people are just out there in the the light that's always there it disappeared and they didn't have some like explanation for it, they would just probably lose their mind. So they get this base explanation, you know, like this materialistic, here you go. It's a ball of gas in the sky that's going to burn forever. <laughs> Maybe it'll go out one day. And then, uh, you know, and there's this other giant rock that's going to get in front of it and we're all going to be scared. It's going to be crazy. But yeah. Well, here's something I was thinking about too, because I saw a video of, a guy saying um how can the how can the moon be eclipsing the sun when and then he's right there looking at an eclipse right and he's showing in the video he's showing it and then he does a full like you know turns around and you can see the moon right i personally don't video, think though? i don't know i personally That's... don't if it is it wasn't this eclipse yeah, it couldn't yeah. have been. It couldn't have been this eclipse because the su the moon was a new moon. It wasn't yeah. like a a um waxing or waning moon. It was a new moon, which means it's like right where the sun's at. It's already next to the sun anyway. Um or in the same vicinity as the sun. Because that's why it's new because it's blocked. You can't see it. Um it's it's all black, right? Allegedly. Um, so like if like if this is um what we're looking at, right? Let's just say this the plane of existence that we're on is like this circle here, and you have the moon and the sun, right? When the moon is the brightest, when it's a full moon, it's directly across. It's like totally directly across. It's when it starts like catching up to the sun that it starts waning right waning 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 and then i don't know what happens here because i don't freaking know what it this all is but sun when it's, eats the moon. 
<laughs> when it's close, when it's completely over here, is it's black. It's it's a it's a new moon. And then as it starts coming back around this way, then it starts um, waxing, right? Up until it's here, and then it's a full moon. Direct opposition, yeah. Yeah, so whatever that video was showing, if if it was, because I remember feeling like I saw that video before some years ago. So it was probably from an eclipse. If it wasn't that video, I saw it was a similar video of someone saying that. Um, but it was probably from a different eclipse. Now, in that case, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But in this case, it's kind of hard to to say that because this, the moon was pretty much where the sun was. So what was it that eclipsed it? We don't know. I wanted to share the the um the definition of eclipse if I can do that just yeah, just do. for giggles. So here's, here's what dictionary.com says. All right. In astronomy, it is the obscuration of the light of the moon by the intervention of the earth between it and sun lunar eclipse or the obscurity. Basically, oh. I don't buy that. Oh. All right. Next. That's too freaking complicated. A similar B, a similar phenomenon with respect to any other planet and either its satellite or the sun, whatever. C, the partial or complete interception of the light of one component of a binary star by the other. Okay, that's what modern astronomy tells you. Um, the second definition is any obscuration of light. And the third definition is a reduction or loss of splendor status, reputation, et cetera. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. There. That sounds more like what's going on. Right. I knew you were going to say something about that. The status of the sun. Well, that makes me think of what Mario Garza um, symbolic studies talks about when he talks about how we used to be more polar and it turned into solar. We used to be more about the pole star, Polaris, right? And somehow we became a very solar-based religion, scientism, dare I say. Whole mindset, yeah. Society. And it's funny how the symbols are the same. They just switch out the meanings. Yeah. Like the circle with the dot in it, the circumpunct, that used to be the pole star because it was the center of the, that's where the center was of the heavens. Or even and an obelisk. It's like making it the sun. Yeah. The obelisk. Yeah. Now look at looked at as a sign of solar worship because you could follow the the shadow that the sun makes with the obelisk, but the mm. obelisk is pointing at the North Star. <laughs> mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. mm. So people are just um they see this trick of shadow and light and they're amazed. <laughs> and they're like, Whoa, look, we can we can see what time it is now. Ah maybe there was no timekeeping uh before that in the same way you know yeah hmm. things were just they just were indeed you know? but i guess it's a good thing we have days because then people know when to tune into the oversharing show every thursday guys make sure you check us out shout out to the chat by the way Let's see if there's anything interesting going on <laughs> yeah who says he's thoroughly confused by ed bassmaster i don't know because <laughs> Cody's Cody's saying, just look at it. It's all you can do is look at it. He's <laughs> he's quoting Ed Bassmaster. Do you ever watch his stuff on Instagram or? No, I don't think YouTube? so. He's uh, ridiculous. 
he's he's uh from the Philly area, I think, or at least is oh, or nice. was. And he's just he goes up to people and he pranks them. He's like um a total prankster, kind of like um candid camera style. And he just asks them to do like he he plays different characters. So um one of the characters he plays is this guy who like will go up to people and he pretends like he's this jacked guy and he always walks with his arms like this. And he and he like will go up to people and he like say stuff to them like, Oh, you're oh, you're riding a bike. That's I used to do that. That's for sissies, you know. I all I do is work out now. I just go to the gym and I pump iron and you know, and he just tries <clears throat> to get them riled up and see how they behave and how they act and stuff. Um he doesn't often show his like reveal, you know, that he tells them he's just joking. But every once in a while he'll do a he'll do a reveal. Oh, that's cool. So most times Chip people... Diamond, yeah. That's what he plays, Chip Diamond. He uh and then there's this other guy he plays. I don't know the name of that character, but he plays a guy who says, just look at it. It's everything. Everything he talks about is just to look, look at, just look at it. And he, he did this one about the eclipse. And then he tells people, he was telling these people like, yeah, my, you don't want to look at it with your eyes because, you know, without the sunglasses, because you can burn your eyes out. And then he tells this fake story about how his brother or, you know, somebody he knows burnt their eyes out and they were like, melting in front before his eyes and it was just like disgusting and gross and it's like people were like oh my god like indiana jones style melting you ever oh see my... it, which one indiana Temple of Doom? uh no raiders of the lost ark oh i forgot oh yes gross yeah i forgot about that the Nazis i only melt. Rewatched it recently within the last several months because I hadn't seen it since probably I was a kid or something years and years ago. Emilio, I guess that's the other guy he plays. I'm guessing. Oh, gotcha. That's that's pretty funny. Yeah, I always like those prank things. I think they're pretty funny. Um, but yeah, but what was did gonna... you want to oh. talk about? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to talk about kind of what I've been into like recently just looking into things and different worldview aspects that I have but um I just feel like uh especially with these eclipses and stuff that's going on that more and more I feel like we live in this magical place like I've been watching a lot of um my lunch break that guy and uh oh yeah also Ben Ben whenever he's he's like sporadically putting out stuff the archivist do they know each other I don't think so. There's a lot of people talking about these things. Um, and I'm not sure who's in aware of what scope. It's pretty funny. But I just think it's cool because there's these all these little groups. It's not just one source of information where everybody's worshiping people as much anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's really cool, especially these old buildings that exist everywhere. And the narrative is just like every single one burned down and they were rebuilt <laughs> in a year, you know, in the 18th. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too. And then with the orphan trains and the repopulation, I could totally see that there was some kind of empire or something here before that was taken out. And I think the remnants were wiped out probably by the Civil War, I think. Um, that there was a lot of pockets, especially like in these swamps and stuff like that, of <laughs> of people that were like left over and we just call them Indians or Native Americans or whatever, you know. And I, I think also possibly the Native Americans that we dealt with could have been the enemies of these people or the people that were like the lower class. And then whatever the heck happened, happened. Maybe it was even some kind of reset or something, you know, like a like a plasma event or who knows. And maybe it was a comet. <laughs> uh, maybe something happened. But um, I feel like where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it, the history we've been given, I think, is like just total crock you know it's crazy it's it's more like a story that we were told kind of like the heavens you know because yeah. if you really wanted to like seed a new empire with people you know what better way to 
than to just totally lie to them about their past. I mean, it's, you know, it actually would make a really good plot line for like a book or a movie to not exactly do what happened, but just have it happen sometime in the future to like some other civilization, you know what I mean? But you can write it even in the same way. That's, it's a really interesting thing. But now though, the other reason I want to bring it up because now every time I go hiking, even before I would think this, but now more than ever, when I see things when I'm hiking and looking around, I'm just like, wow, I'm just I feel like I'm walking around ruins of like some other civilization. It's kind of, uh, kind of awe inspiring actually. Totally. Um, it's funny you mentioned that uh, the my lunch break and the orphan trains and the repopulation after potential reset, because I just was thinking about that recently, too, because I watched that one of those particular videos from my lunch break. And and then I saw something else kind of around that same time. I guess it was a movie and I think from the Instagram comments, it was called Armageddon. I never watched, I never confirmed if that was it, but it shows a clip of this woman talking to this man. And it's basically the talking about the freaking Guidestones. Remember the Georgia Guidestones? <laughs> it's basically talking about like, oh, the popul the world can only handle 500 million population and we have 7 billion people that we're going to have to eradicate and stuff and I'm like what the hell are you guys talking about this is freaking crazy um it made me think of that my lunch break guy because he was showing um he was showing like charts where he has he shows the population going like this like from like some sometime in the 1700s all the way up to like now or whatever and like it's almost like we get reset in this realm regularly i don't know how why i don't know I don't understand well, that would make sense why we think we've lived these lives over and over again and deja vu and stuff like that if you know it we say that this is all mind right and that everything's created by our mind but if it's some kind of creation of the mind that is still ever going and ever going like so maybe to create this realm it took a lot of energy and like we were talking about before the law of one, the Bigfoots that are out there, they help sustain this. There's monks that are like, you know, in the in the mountains that are said to be meditating. And if they didn't meditate, the world would just like come apart, you know. So things like that, maybe there's a hint of truth to it. And this realm in the material is of the mind, but it all does stay here because it would be too much to just totally make a new one every time. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but, you know, maybe that's a limitation that exists or uh, whatever. Or maybe because this material is part of our mind and our consciousness is evolving and has to all stay here. So all this stuff that's part of our mind has to stay here and it just gets rebuilt and it crumbles and it gets rebuilt and it crumbles. It kind of reminds me of what happens to people when they go through like a dark night of the soul. They're going around with this ego. They come across some truth that blows their mind. They want to change their whole life. You know, they it's reset. like an hour. Yeah, they reset. reset. And then they raise rise from the ashes and they're so new and they have a new worldview. And then they're going along and they're like, wait a minute, space is fake. And then boom, and and again. So and just as it happens to the individual as above, so below. And I love what that that thing you sent me with the as above, so below, how it's kind of a mistranslation. And from the yeah. Arabic, it's more about the above contains the below and the below contains the above. Thank you well, for remembering that because I had thought of that and I was like, what did she say? I forgot already. Yeah. No, for shizzle. Um, so in that whole same concept, maybe the whole the realm is like that, too. And that's what happens. There's some kind of reset. And if there's people that figured it out, maybe there is some kind of adjustment bureau and goes along and just like it could they could even just be programmed. Maybe they're not even real people. And they just go along and, and play all these parts. I would say they would have to be real, though, to 
to be a part of the collective consciousness and the imagination that is this realm or whatever. But that would totally make sense. And then these, you know, these resets happen, but the buildings are left. Maybe also the buildings are left because people who survive remember them and they're just such strong buildings that it's it's like implanted somehow that these buildings could survive these resets or whatever. Um, the buildings could represent what we learn. You know, we learn things maybe in past lives and then we die and we forget about them and we come back, but we still have this sense, like we're still on that level. So say in the past life, we leveled up, then we die. We might have forgot how we leveled up or why, but we still have that consciousness to bring in. Same thing with these buildings, right? They might have been part of an other civilization, then they got wiped out, but the advancements still are there. They're still there maybe as a guide for, for people to keep uh, expanding their consciousness just because these buildings, I mean, are just so amazing to look at them. They're aesthetically pleasing. So maybe that's why they're just so permanent. And it it, it just are you following kind of what i'm saying like so the same way we learn lessons when we die in our lives and we have these things that stick out in us well the realm does yes. too it has these amazing temples and buildings something to think yeah about. it's it's a lot to to uh uh process and think about um but it's funny you mentioned the law of one because in regards to um what I was talking about earlier with the, the kind of the reset stuff. Um, it, it, when I was reading something in the law of one the other day, it made me think of that. And, um, I mean, it just makes me want to do more episodes on the law of one. <laughs> yeah, we totally, what, what is it? Uh, what's Can it Can I say? read you the quote? Yeah. From love one. Okay. I don't have it ready because I didn't plan on talking about this, but I, I looked up my notes that I took it and it's from, um, well, I'll just, I'll just, it's from session 59 question number four, I think. All right. So the questioner says at the end of the second major cycle, there were a few hundred thousand people incarnate on earth. There are over 4 billion incarnate today. There were, sorry, were the over 4 billion people who are incarnate today, were they in the earth planes, but not incarnate at the time? Or did they come in from elsewhere during the last 25,000 year cycle? We're talking about the great year. I think this great cycle, right? Mm -hmm. And Ra says, I am Ra. There were three basic divisions of origin of these entities. Firstly, and primarily, those are the planetary sphere you call Maldek. Remember, we talked about Maldek on that uh, first reading that we did on the Law of One stuff from episode, I think it was session number nine. Um, I'll read that again. Firstly, and primarily, those of the planetary sphere you call Maldek having become able to take up third density once again, were gradually loosed from self-imposed limitations of form. Secondly, there were those of other third density entrants or neophytes whose vibratory patterns matched the Terran experiential nexus. Now Terran is spelled T-E-R-R-A-N. And this kind of caught my eye too, because that guy, Alex Collier, that I've sent to you before, who's, I would say he's kind of a channeler of, he's not a channeler, I guess, maybe not quite a channeler, but like a, a contactee, I guess, of these two Andromedan entities that he uh, speaks with. Um, they use that terminology, Terran, like we're Terran, I guess. Yeah, like um, Terra, Terra, Terra Firma. Right, or, like Terra yeah. Firma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but is that just the name of our realm? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. These then filtered in through incarnative processes. Thirdly, in the past approximate 200 of your years, and this is in the 80s, right? You have experienced much visiting of the wanderers. I'm, we're talking like people like Jesus right here. It may be noted that all possible opportunities for incarnation 
are being taken at this time due to your harvesting process and the opportunities which this offers. So that's kind of, you know, interesting, don't you think? Like also that 200 year time frame is interesting to me too. Hmm. Because that's when they're proposing that this reset, well that's what my lunch break thinks. The reset seems like it could have happened sometime in the 1700s and that's when they started yes. popular over exactly. here. Exactly. Um, exactly. So that 200 years is is key, right? That's why it made me think of that. Yeah. I was like, what? And then the other, you know, when they say like 25,000 years and five and all this stuff, I, I also don't take that literally kind of the same way that they talk about space and planets and stuff like that. Cause I feel like they're still talking to the mind frame of these people where will or where, where they will understand it. And it'll make sense to them because if they said it was just, you know, oh yeah, it's only a little while ago, it could blow the whole scene. Like, there's a reason why our culture has the origin story that it has. I'll say it's just an origin story, like a movie. It has to do I, with our, yeah, it's an allegory for, oh, for sure. But I think it has to do with like our elevation of consciousness. It probably helps this realm become the optimal realm of um, hurdles this way, you know, such materialism. It has to be, it has to have the materialism, the materialistic point of view, that mindset, it has to have its own origin story that makes sense to people, right? So I think that, uh, I think that's totally possible. It fits in with it too. It, and the w way you're talking about people coming like the, um, from Maldek and stuff like that. And what we said before about the Bigfoots, they were installed here because they have a higher propensity for like radiation and they could outlive because Other, they were from a different realm that was like that as well or something they can like yeah. their bodies can stand it well maybe there's something about this realm that either it's special or whatever or they figured it out or this is the new realm where they test souls this is like the latest one everybody yeah. this is the real one where you really think you're screwed all the time and someone's coming to get you and all these things right this is the one. This is like uh, expert level right now. We're on we're on Halo Legendary right now. So you would say if you're a Halo player, that's the setting you could put it on for the hardest. <laughs> um, we're in the legendary realm where it's it's just uh, we're steeped with materialism, and it's not hard physically, but mentally it's really hard to pay attention. I mean, you have so many distractions, right? There's so many things you could go do. So many forms of escapism, I guess you could say. So many ways to distract yourself right at your fingertips. So I really think that would be the case. And maybe we are coming upon some kind of harvest. And maybe it has to do with like these Phoenix resets and all these things. But that whole worldview and that point of view and everything we've been talking about for like the last 20 minutes is such a better worldview to have. It's so much more magical because the possibilities are like literally quite endless in this realm if that's the case. And when we die, there's more, there's another journey to be had. So there's really nothing to be sad about or fear if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of like what happens when we die, et cetera, I've been not because of this topic, but just because I've been kind of curious about theosophical ideas, Rosicrucian ideas, um, like in the last several months, I've found these books. Um, a lot of them you can just download um, for free from these theosophical websites or even um, Rosicrucian websites. I just, I looked up on iBooks or in the Apple books, just look up A-M-O-R-C, AMORC, which is um, an acronym for the Rosicrucian I don't know, society or whatever they are called. I don't really know. But all these books will come up. I'm sure you could probably do it with Kindle too. I just didn't try. Um, I think I did a long time ago with Kindle. So there's probably a bunch of um, Rosicrucian books I have in Kindle that I haven't opened. But mostly I'm reading um, some books that I've recently come across. And they're talking about um, these concepts of like what happens like when you die and and 
it's mostly about the body that you inhabit. And there's like different, I guess, um, parts of the body. I don't even know how to explain it because I'm still like really just barely diving into this. But it's like you have your physical, right? But then they also talk about an astral body and then like a mental or like a heavenly body. Like I, I'm just, I'm not going <laughs> to, don't quote me. <laughs> but like one of the books was saying something like, depending on how spiritually advanced you are and um, spiritually mature you have gotten in your like physical reality, the different times of the different amount of times you spend in these um, times before you actually reincarnate. So like you'll spend a certain amount of time in the astral. If you're like, I think what I, what I understand is correct is if you're super spiritually advanced, which there's, there's so many variations. They're like, we can't give you an exact number, but like, let's just say you're like spiritually advanced. You're probably going to spend less time in the astral after you die from like some, like maybe an average person would spend 40 years or like, and then some can spend like three years and then some can spend like minutes or, you know, hours mm -hmm. or whatever. And then the next one I think is the mental or the heavenly or something like that. And then like, depending on how spiritual advanced you are, like the more spiritually advanced you are, you'll spend more time in that heavenly realm than in the astral. You'll like shorten the amount of time you're in the astral, but you'll spend, so you get, like, if you're super spiritually advanced, you'll spend like minutes or something in the astral and you'll spend like 1500 years in the, in the heavenly realm or something like that. Uh, that that sounds like uh, a better description than we get of like he heaven and hell and all these things that come down to us, you know? Yeah. And it, it specifically talked about like how hell, it doesn't exist as described. It's, um, and then they said something about how purgatory, what the, you know, why the word purgatory was used because it's not why it was used, but it's like, I think it's that astral period, if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah, that, can, that would line up. Yeah, you can make that astral time a hell if 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 that's what if you're not super spiritually advanced and you you know you can make that time frame a hell, but nothing is forever either. Like it if you're if you're infinite, like if you're made by the infinite creator and you're infinite, then these are all going to be finite all these time, all these timelines, whatever. So it'll eventually end and then you'll reincarnate. <laughs> as yeah. That's my understanding so far. It makes sense. So if you think that somebody who's not as spiritually advanced, they are probably focused more on themselves than they are on other people or not just other people, but everybody as a whole, right? Like we're all one kind of thing. So after they die, maybe they have to kind of exist in this plane so they could see what happens as a result of everything that they've done with other people. So they get to kind of see. And then when it works out, maybe there's a certain spot where then they can move on. And I, I'm also thinking that if you heal something of your past trauma in your family line, that what if your relatives are around to see that? And then maybe they're released as well. Maybe they're set free. You're like literally setting your demons free, right? Maybe somehow, and it could even just be past versions of yourself. And we're talking about consciousness here. So if at the root of it, we're all one, you know, whatever, but maybe it's just, just this line of consciousness that you were set to work on. And there's all these past versions of yourself, or like I say, call it your ancestors or whatever, and they're hovering around you. Maybe that's why a lot of people have like negative energy and, and bad luck and bad things that happen to them, or they just have this life that doesn't seem as like cheerful as other people. Like these things just constantly happen to them. Maybe that's what it is. And if you are able to heal it, maybe you can free those spirits or let them go or whatever it is. I mean, that's a really cool thing to think of. It, it, it's, it reminded me of that because when people say how when you, heal your own trauma it kind of goes back and heals the lines behind you 
Mm -hmm. what if they are because there really is no such thing as time so it's possibly they could be swimming around you right now Mm. you know that's what hauntings and stuff are about because i really i feel like that that could be real like ghosts and and certain things that are haunted and all that stuff you know maybe that's how it works yeah seems to be about regret and not being able to let go you know you see it in movies too where people just aren't ready to let go like that movie the sixth sense i should watch that again (laughs) Mm-hmm. With we uh, recently watched it again. Yeah, with M Night uh, M Night Shyamalan with Bruce Willis. I see Shyamalan dead Ding Dong. Yeah, and a lot of those people, it seems like like Bruce. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but Bruce Willis himself, like he just had something he couldn't let go of, and then when he was finally able to let go, then he could move on. Then That's he kind- could see. Yeah. Right, because he was only seeing what he wanted to see. He wasn't allowing himself to see what was really happening like he would see people there and he would think that they knew he was standing there or sitting there with him and maybe they didn't know but he assumed that they knew because that's what he wanted to see (laughs) exactly hey trish what's going on hope you're doing well blue kachina says seeing is seeing that's great seeing is seeing (laughs) Yeah, no, I I love that idea because it just it's another it adds another layer of magic, right? Like, okay, so wait, I could actually actually when I not only when I'm healing myself, uh, making a better life for myself and the people around me, but I I could possibly be like letting ghosts go and demons that are like following me because demon daemon, it's like the self. If you think of other versions of yourself, you know, and demons originally meant messenger. Yeah. And that what else would it be but a messenger of like, hey, let's get your life together or whatever it is, you know, like these entities that could be following you. I mean, that's one way to look at it. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I think that every little bit of truth is just scattered out there. It's like it's like G.I. Joe and the Weather Dominator, except instead of three pieces, <laughs> it was a G.I. Joe movie. Uh, it's just many pieces and it really takes a discerning mind and somebody that's the thing right they always say like i've reached the epitome of knowledge by knowing i know nothing right like if you don't have a set fixed idea of what it has to be in your mind then it really what it is can start to seep in through all these Mm. little truth that we hear everywhere and of course i don't Mm. think we're ever going to be able to get to the bottom of exactly what's happening here until we actually die and cross that plane I don't I don't think there's going to be any reveal and that's what everybody seems to be waiting for you know this big reveal we're going to figure it out I think that's just a fear of death they're they're afraid to go through the gate of death but if there's really nothing to be afraid of then it it, it could be a beautiful thing and um that, yeah it's just embracing the mystery go ahead though go ahead that makes me think of um going back to the eclipse and um you know what I experienced um, the silver lining, you know, I, I was thinking about that and I thought to myself, like that whole concept of not deciding what it's going to be, but allowing it to be. Mm. And like, like, I saw those clouds and I saw it in the, I saw it in the, um, the weather app. It was like, you could see three or four days of just like cloud, cloud, like, it was like sunny and then it was like cloud, 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 cloud for like days and then rain on Tuesday, which was the day after. And I'm just like, I, you know, I was kind of like, all right, let's maybe manifest these clouds away. But then I thought to myself, you know what, God, whatever you want, whatever you want to happen that day, that's what I will see. That's what I will experience. And it'll be perfect. It'll just be what it needs to be. And I got to think like, What if that was, what's, what if that's what God wanted us to see? Because maybe there was something we couldn't see that we weren't meant to see in the sky for whatever reason. You know, those of us who have an idea, maybe we kind of know that there may be some, was something there that, you know, was kind of hidden away or wasn't supposed to be seen, but, you know, we didn't get to see it. So, oh, well. But hey, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe there, maybe we shouldn't have seen it. 
And so here we are. Mm. It, it reminds me of a, it's like a sign that was hidden from us. So something happened. So maybe it's pointing to something that happened in our realm. I think Archaics was saying something about this, though, that, you know, like maybe something happened that we're going to find out about it later. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be like the cause of like, you know, people getting pissed off or whatever. I mean, there's so many things that if people found out, <laughs> like if they did a full disclosure on that, people would get so mad about. Think about the experimental the experimental medical serums, you know, think about these wars and stuff that are going on. Think about 7-Eleven, you know, like. So you're right. Maybe our consciousness was not ready for whatever this guy was trying to show us um, or maybe people uh that have or, or maybe like for for those of us who are a, a more aware um we would probably be maybe okay with it yeah 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 but but it's the grand majority of people who would not have been ready well it's like a sacrifice right we sacrificed uh being our right to see what was in the sky so everyone else didn't lose their mind <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. And just to be grateful, right? You could look at it that way, this way, because I know a lot of people were upset that it was cloudy and they didn't get to see it, but that reeks of victim narrative, right? Like you weren't meant to see mm -hmm. it. If you guess what? If you didn't see it, you weren't meant mm -hmm. to see it. Exactly. Tell yeah. You. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like it it reminds me of something that um, so I used to go to acupuncture years ago. And this girl, she was an American, but she was learning. Um, she had learned the Chinese methodology and all that stuff. She knew herbalism and um, acupuncture and tongue, like diagno diagnosis, like looking at your tongue and stuff and like taking your uh, pulse and everything. She knew all that. But anyway, she was, um, she was like kind of my first wake, kind of a little bit like wake up call to the stuff that we talk about today. <laughs> and I didn't even know at the time. Um she said something to me very profound that I didn't realize was profound until more, you know, years later, but she would say to me, um, kind of the sense of like, you're exactly where you need to be type of thing. But she was like, you know why, you know why I know that. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because it happened, you know, like it happened. So it was meant to happen, that sort of thing, you know? And I, I used to think about that sometimes and like, and lately I've been thinking about that too. Like, you know why it was meant to happen because it happened. <laughs> you know why it was supposed to, because it did. <laughs> it's that simple. So, yeah, um, exactly. It did. And it's kind of, it, it could be a paradox to people who don't, understand exactly because we're always meant to think that there's an endless a million possibilities about the way things go and every choice we make affects everything it's like a time travel movie right so people can get paralyzed and not realize what step they want to make because they're afraid of what's going to happen when it's more just about doing it <laughs> and then if that was the wrong thing you learn from your mistake and you keep going but the whole concept of really if if that's what happened it's that's what reality is so that's the only thing that was ever going to happen and that's how it was going to happen everything that you thought right people not you but people get their expectations all the expectations that people have those are just thoughts that's just a, um, uh, a different mental creation that didn't make it into the you know into this reality that we're experiencing so yeah Everybody has like a picture of how they want things to go. And that's something I've been working on too. I've been trying to like not have that picture and just, just go into things and see how they are. Try to not picture how it's going to be. And yeah, let go. Yeah. And just be and let be. Um, But you said something about free will and it made me think of something that um I recently like resonated with. So my friend Christian, he watches that girl, um, The Alchemist, mm -hmm. Sarah El Khadi, I think is her name, something like that. And um, he sometimes will share stuff with me that she said, because I don't 
always necessarily have time to watch all these videos, but like, he'll just be like, oh, this was good. And sometimes I'll watch him, but lately I haven't had a chance. So recently in the last few weeks, maybe he said something to me that was like, oh my God, that makes total sense. And he said that he, that she was talking about the difference between fate and free will. And she said, think of fate as the coloring book, the lines in the coloring book, and then think of free will as the crayons. So some level of like you incarnate, this is how I interpret it. So some level of you incarnating in this particular lifetime was kind of already like, you will kind of already knew the gist. You're like, oh, I'm going to be born into this family with, you know, these people that maybe I've lived other incarnations with, and I'm going to work out issues with this particular person because that's part of the purpose of this particular lifetime. And I'm going to probably do some other things. But as you come into this realm, of course, the veil of forgetfulness, you forget, right? So the your free will in taking those actions is basically the crayons. Like what color are you going to color, you know, the hat? And what color are you going to color the pants? And what color are you going to color the face and the hair? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's a cool analogy. That's, that made sense to me. And I'm like, that's so helpful. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, especially because if you think of color, like you could literally make it gloomy, <laughs> right? A, a scene or you can make it right. cheerful. You can make it exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, something else you said made me um think of you said you said the word disclosure and <laughs> it made me think of that movie Capricorn one that somebody oh, yeah. brought up at some point. I, I can't remember who. Maybe it was Cody. Um, yeah, it was Cody who brought it up. He he's like I told, okay, I, I saw this link to this new movie coming out. Now I can't even remember the name of it. Do you remember the name of it? Oh, was it Capricorn one? No, no, no. It's a new movie coming out with what's her face. <laughs> oh, were they f fake the moon landing? That's yes. so, Oh, it has it. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but I okay. saw Okay. So there's a new movie coming out guys. That's talking about faking the moon landing. Um, I saw the clip, I saw the uh, trailer, and I was like, wow, this is disclosure. Fly like, me to the moon. Yes. Yes. They named it They named it the song, you know. Fly me to the yeah. moon. I played that the other day. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I like that song. It was a good, good song. One. But A lot of moon songs. <laughs> yeah, there are. So, um, it... I was telling, I think I sent it to Cody and he's like, they've been doing that for years. They made a movie in the seventies called um, Capricorn one. And I'm like, holy crap. I didn't know about that one. And um, so we didn't finish it, but we started to watch it the other day. And wow. It was like, if you <laughs> can't see through that, your reality. Well, I think what it's going to do though is leave a doubt in people's mind that say okay maybe this footage that looks so fake maybe it was fake but they definitely still went to the moon but then they just showed this footage because of the cold war and blah 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 but they were still there you know like yeah. that's the level <laughs> of dissonance the cognitive dissonance yeah. yes for sure so but it's out it's you know they're putting it out there in plain sight I would um, go see that. I like comedy anyway, so that's <laughs> it'll give me a it's a reason to talk about the moon with people. Hey, have you seen that new movie? Yeah. Oh, I uh, know. I know. <laughs> I can't wait till it comes out because I think I'll probably watch it too. And then, you know, it'll just be funny. Like you said, it'll be a comedy. But yeah, you know, here we are, Brandon, 10 days later after this eclipse. And um, I don't 
have anything going on around me that's weird, except for, and it's not weird, but like Brendan said earlier, I saw javelinas in my yard the other night. Yeah. And I saw a bear. Oh, yes, you did. Uh, not in this mm-hmm. town. About a half an hour away, we were driving. We just, And then uh, there's this place we like to go get egg and cheese sandwiches are really good. So we stopped there and, and um, I found the side road where you can park and there's an awesome little stream waterfall that goes by. And on the way up there to the right, there was a, a house and there wasn't a lot of houses. It was mostly woods and stuff. And they had a pretty big yard and there's just this bear running. So we turned around and got some pictures. <laughs> it was a really cool black bear. Uh, we also saw on that same, this was Monday. The bears. The bears. We also saw two ravens, giant ravens. And then we had a hawk almost fly into us. Wow. Right before that. And we saw some other animal to a oh oh <laughs> in the same yard as the bear so as we're driving you see the yard to the right then the house and then there's more yard after the house there was a turkey in the other part the bear was like in the bigger first part of the yard and there was a turkey on the other side of the house so these people just had like a wild kingdom going on in their in their yard it was nice. cool though um so a lot of a lot of good omens then we went and saw how lung which is oh, a that's right you s- and go ahead yeah, it's a uh, Nordic kind of band, like Viking music, and there was, it was definitely a ritual. It was really cool. They had all kinds of runes and stuff, and uh, I highly recommend it if they come to your area, check them out. We saw them at the Bushnell Theater, which is a place they usually put on like Broadway shows and stuff. Oh, neat! So more, I guess, of like a show, and um, yeah, it was it was really cool. Oh, very cool. But um, yeah, as I was saying. 10 days later, I don't know. Is there anything besides the animals you saw going on in your realm? No, nothing really. The only thing I'm seeing is just what's out in the external world, like memes about World War III, but I really have no idea what's going on. I would imagine it's the eye countries. <laughs> mm, good call. Good call. <laughs> the eyes, you know, the not not Iraq. The, uh, that one's already probably out of the picture. The but eyes. The, the eyes. I see what you guys are doing there. Um, and, you know, maybe this eclipse was some kind of portents of war or something. But uh, as maybe we all they just I, I would say they probably just used it, you know, yeah, it's yeah, that's, like yeah. an egregore or like anything like just bring. Use it as attention, use it as. A, you know, taking people's energy type of thing. Yeah, I mean, everybody was prepped for some kind of emergency or something to happen anyway, and then nothing happened. And then a few days later, (laughs) so maybe, hey, you know, that's how I think a lot of this propaganda and all this stuff works is you put things out there for people. You lay like a a groundwork, a frame, you know, it's like a um, it's like when people are hypnotized and they get a key word implanted into their head. It's kind of like that, I think. Speaking of hypnotism, um, this girl I'm I know, and we send each other stuff on Instagram sometimes, not often, but at some point she sent me something about hypnotism. I can't even remember what it was, but she told me she's like, I can't be hypnotized. And she's like, You want to know how you can know if you can be hypnotized or not? And she gave me this like exercise. So basically I want you to try this, Brandon. (laughs) You put your head back as far as you can go like, you know, like that. And then you, and then you close your eyes or sorry, look, pretend like you're looking behind you first, like open your eyes and look like you're looking behind you as much as you can and then close your eyes. Do they just easily close or do you have a hard time closing them? No, it's it's kind of like a hard time. Oh, you're having a hard time? You might easily be hypnotized. Oh. Because if well, you can I... easily close your eyes, like well, your I head's guess back. I can easily close them. Hang on. <laughs> you're like, no, I don't I want to be easily <laughs> It's just different. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a hard time doing it. It's just... uh takes a little more effort <laughs> yeah okay so but people who can't who still like have maybe 
can't oh, close I see them. What you're yeah, I could fully. Close I think it's if they can't fully close them, uh, they're more easily hypnotized or something huh. like that. I don't know if it's true, but I can close mine, so I don't know. I've been. To- I've always thought that if I were in a, you know, an audience and I were to be called up. I don't think I could, like, I just mentally think to myself, I don't think I could be hypnotized. I just don't see it happening. You know what I mean? But I've, I'm, I've never tried. So I was, um, when I was in the Marine Corps, we used to get like a 96 hour pad, like whenever there was a holiday and we were back on base or whatever, they would give us four days off so we can go travel and stuff. Um, uh, so sometimes though, before them, like when it was a Memorial day or whatever, they'd have, people come in and they would do like a big assembly there. They had like a big theater on base or whatever. And they'd have everyone come and they do a show. And sometimes they'd have like state troopers talk. Mm-hmm. And one time they had a hypnotist and he had everybody close their hands together as hard as he can. And he did this thing and he's like, all right, you won't be able to open them. And he goes, all right, now open them. And some people could let go and some people couldn't. And he, he got a bunch of the people on stage that I couldn't let go, but I was able to let go. Like it didn't work on me. Yeah. And then he had some of the people up there and he was hypnotizing him. It was really funny. I mean, I, I don't know if it was fake or real. Cause I don't know any of the guys that were up there, but they all look like Marines. They were all like had shaved heads or, you know, short hair or whatever. So. Well, speaking of hypnotism, um, I've been listening to the audio book about Edgar Casey called there is a river. And I remember toward the beginning somewhere um, they talked about how they talked about hypnotism, right? Because, um, it was kind of a related topic to what he was doing. And so they weren't sure. And they had people come and they tried to like hypnotize him, but he would never go to the full stage to the very end. He could never like, they could get him to a certain point, but he would never fully get to the, the full hypnotist hypnotized state. And um, I just wonder if that's how a lot of us are. Like we can't, necessarily be taken all the way to that to that step or maybe at all you know um but for him it was because he i guess had this control over it himself where he could hypnotize himself he could lie on the bed and then like lie down breathe and then get into that state by himself he didn't need someone to induce it for him um so anyway i thought that was interesting because i've been reading about um edgar casey and it's been very, very interesting. Yeah. Lots of really cool stuff that I never knew. I remember when you first asked me if I'd ever heard of him and I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. And I didn't look into him. And it wasn't until um, I, at some point, I was looking for audiobooks to to download because Cody had all these extra um, audible credits to use. And he's like, you can get whatever book you want. I was like, cool. So I found that book, There is a River, and I was like, uh, I'm getting this one. Mm-hmm. And um, it took me a while to get it started, but uh, and it's taken me a while to get through it. But um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much done with the book. Now I'm listening just to the, the end, which contains like some appendixes of like discussions of some of the treat, treatments that he was um, uh, prescribing to certain people. But yeah, it, it's been very interesting. Yeah, it's, he definitely had a fascinating life. I read a bunch of stuff on him years ago, though. It'd be interesting to revisit some of that now. Yeah. Just like I want to revisit, um, I want to revisit uh, Sixth Sense. We I've been watching a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm lately because uh, okay. Elizabeth had never seen that. And I watched it okay. years ago, but it's crazy to me because. Are you a like, pig, Parker? A Pink Parker. A Pig Parker. Oh, Pig Parker. Have you ever oh, heard him say that one? I think when, so, yeah. When somebody parks and they park on the line or they don't oh. like. <laughs> I was singing a Schmohawk. These Schmohawks. I don't know that one. I don't know enough. Like, I think I've only seen like one episode. Oh, okay. And maybe right. clips or a clip or two. But. um, I was going to say it's it's really funny because you see kind of inside the life of an introvert a little bit, but also just like the worst. It's kind of like an example of how not to be how he is, you know, because so much happened to him too. And like, even though 
some of the things he does aren't that terrible. They get perceived to be a lot worse than they are just because of the situation, you know, and it, it's like mm. it's karma. But I think that's why it's so funny and it's so good because it's like he immediately just gets punished for things that he does or whatever. It's so funny. <laughs> Mohawk, yeah, there you go, Joe. Yeah, he knows. I guess I'll have to. Uh... It's funny because I think Cody's sister's been somebody's been watching. Someone said they've been watching Curb Your Enthusiasm too. It might have been her. Nice. And um, there was a movie too. Uh, I think it's Delete Space, it's called, or something like that. And it's a movie from 2022 or whatever with Larry David in it. It has a lot of the people in Curb Your Enthusiasm. And it's, it's pretty good. I might have told you about it. Um, basically, Larry David's character is somebody who... Uh, he was like a graphic designer from of the startup company that ended up being just like Tesla. They were making like cars or whatever, electric cars, but they weren't that big. And he got out because he didn't like the name of it or something. He had an argument, stupid argument. So he like sold his shares. And then like the very next day, they became they all became billionaires except for him. It's pretty it's pretty interesting. So everybody knows who he is because he was like on all these magazines and made fun of and stuff. It's set in like 2003. And then it comes to the the future a little bit too, or whatever, or the present day. So it's it's pretty interesting though. It's funny. Joe says, unfortunately, can't get access to it in Germany. I think he means uh, the show Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, got to find a way to pirate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's ways to do that though. Uh, I used to have a an Apple TV. It was like this little device you plug in your TV, but it was jailbroken, and I could get. I think it was Cody was the name of the K O D I or something. <laughs> and I was able to watch all kinds of stuff for free. It was great. But alas, I don't have that technology anymore. I'm some I'm sure we're not some... we're not endorsing or promoting. Yeah, totally. You want to give the money to the to to Larry David because he needs more money now. <laughs> <laughs> um but do as thou wilt. Yeah. <laughs> Shall be the whole of the law. Germany has the strictest copyright laws. Yeah, I bet they do. <laughs> they get real mad when you when you pirate things, and they especially get really mad when you pirate Hitler speeches. <laughs> it's like extra. Oh, that's great. Oh no, I was reading what he said. Yeah. <laughs> he says you can't get access to a lot of stuff on streaming services. And put locker gets shut down. I don't know what that is. Way too fast these days. I think it might be something. I don't know. Some just, app or something. I used to be up on all these things, but I, I just got too lazy. I just share accounts now with people. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever Allegedly. possible, because then they start like tracking IPs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's silly. What are you going to do? Well. But. I don't know. I guess we could wrap this one up. What do you think? Unless you have anything else. It's been almost two hours. Yeah, I think uh, we put a good dent in this topic. What do you think? Yeah, I think so for sure. I mean, I would say to anyone just going forward, like, I mean, I've been hearing about disaster and calamity since at least Y2K, you know, and then even before that was nine nine ninety nine. I was talking about this on another show. They were making a big deal out of September 9th, 1999, because they said that a computer program was like the computer program of all nines meant to like delete or whatever. So oh like, my God. it's possible that when it goes to 9999, there's not a nine. All your savings account. account's going to be like zeroed out. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in the grocery stores, they're going to have empty shelves. So I've been hearing about that for at least 25 years now. So <laughs> maybe one day it'll happen. I'm not saying it's not, and it's not that it's possible, but. You know, worry that day, I guess. Do we I, have to be worried about it? No. no. You just live off a of light, according to uh, some people. You never know. And if you've been practicing fasting, you can do a little better, you know? Yeah. Manna from heaven. You could just eat your neighbors. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm a comedian. <laughs> like Alex Jones. I will eat a liberal's ass or whatever. Like. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> When truthing has gone too far, <laughs> we should take clips of Alex Jones. Be like, when truthing has gone too far, I will eat my liberal neighbor's ass. Oh my god, <laughs> the frogs are turning gay. 
Exactly. Oh, he says Put Locker is an, an illegal streaming thing that pops up, gets taken down and pops up again, etc. Oh, okay, yeah. I remember Napster. Is it like Napster? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's old I am. Um, all right, well, stay tuned, everybody, for future episodes because we have a lot of exciting topics coming up. We plan on doing some more stuff with the Myers-Briggs. Definitely more dow episodes headed your way and then i'm sure we're going to be talking about the law of one and possibly even more bigfoot because that seemed to be popular with some people so uh maybe we can get together and talk about some more bigfoot or maybe even get a guest has anyone out there ever seen bigfoot hit us up yeah yeah if you have do tell for sure sasquatch or bigfoot like corn on the cob tony he correct that's that's why i love our our fans here (laughs) I will eat your leftist ass like corn on the cob. Alex oh, Jones. my gosh. When truthing has gone too far. like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got this in Cave Creek, Arizona. It's like an egg of onyx. I never knew onyx was not black. There's, I guess, all these other type of onyx. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I learned that as well, too. All kinds of different so onyx. So pretty. So nice. Onyxes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love egg. I love any kind of egg. Uh, any kind of egg crystals. I was trying to see if I had one behind me. It's pretty. The symbolism in it is really is really cool. Feels like it has good energy too. It's got that feel. Yeah. Well, I, like I guess it. we could uh, give a shout out to the chat. By the way, um, more of a shout out. What's up, Dissonant Jones? Eleven Trip. people in the yeah, chat. 11 people there we go double digits we're putting them up what's up joe again good to see you even though we talked that's right everybody check out our episode from yesterday really good stuff propaganda and propaganda too under the brandon bonanza playlist um so yeah thank you guys so much for hanging out all the way to the end we love you guys you are the reason why we do this and on that note, oh, I guess I can do a commercial. Make sure if you want to support us to subscribe. Our subscriber count has been holding steady at 828 since at least, I don't know, October, <laughs> maybe longer, but it goes Months. up and down. <laughs> I was saying that yesterday and then I looked at it this morning. It was at 827. I'm like, ah, I Dude, see 827 is the one that I remember. Yeah. It's like 827 all the time for me when I look at it. Maybe yeah. that's a special sign for us. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. What is the uh, angelic meaning of angel number 827? But go ahead. Oh, seven, two. That's my born day. So, mm. mm-hmm. And then, and eight, then there's and then, an eight, infinity. Yeah. And eight times two is, I'm sorry, eight. Never mind. <laughs> 17 is the, uh, I'll just go there. 17 would be the, um, the numerology, which is an eight, another infinity. Or if you look at 17, it's the angel card. And then 828 is cool because it's a uh, a repeat. A palindrome. You have two eights. Yeah, palindrome. We're in a palindrome day today, aren't we, by the way? Isn't oh, all, is all these days? They... Yeah, I think all these days are palindromes. Oh, right? Or not yet. Not yet. Now, oh, maybe it's till the end of the month. Yeah, the end of the month. Once we get into the 20s, that's what it okay. is. Okay. Okay. 2024. And 420 is coming up, everybody. Make sure you don't go too crazy for Hitler's birthday. Um, (laughs) That joke was so much funnier when nobody knew it was Hitler's birthday and you could just surprise him. (laughs) That's funny. I didn't know that was his birthday. Maybe I did and I forgot. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Per usual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, He'll surprise me again next year and tell me again. And it'll be like the first time I heard it. To Hitler's birthday? No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so to support us there we go subscribe thumbs up share this stuff around comment let us know what you think even if you just want to put emojis under there you know we we love the comments um you can donate to us more laws more problems.com click on the over sharing tab there's several ways there and just show up here every thursday and hang out in the chat that's really the best way we love to see our numbers uh especially in double digits we get excited so keep it coming and uh what do we say to the good people sharon that once you start oversharing, then you totally stop being a Karen.
And remember, everybody, we're not trying to tell you how to live. Just maybe how to live a little bit more freely, could it be? I like that, freely. That's right, everybody. And until next week, keep over sharing, and we'll see you later. Take care. Ciao. Ciao. All right. Done.